PowerShell operators. Hi, I'm Don Jones. The operators are one of the things that lets PowerShell perform comparisons, which becomes crucial if you want to perform filtering. Now, there's a lot of different operators, and if you have any prior programming experience, you probably know what computer language operators look like. Unfortunately, you're going to have to reach inside to your brain and delete that information because PowerShell takes a different approach. One of the handy things about PowerShell's comparison operators is that they can be used directly from the command line. Uh, for example, here's a quick quiz. Is 10 greater than 100? PowerShell knows. False. Uh, is 100 less than 1,000? True. Uh, what about equality? Does hello equal hello? Yes, it does. Here's a trick for you. Does lowercase hello equal uppercase hello? Yes, it does, because PowerShell for string comparisons is case insensitive. There is a case sensitive equality. In fact, there's also a CGT for case sensitive greater than, CLT for case sensitive less than, and so forth. Uh, is 100 less than or equal to 100? Yes, and is 10 greater than or equal to five? Yes. If you need to do a not equal, is 10 not equal to 10? No. 10 is equal to 10. It is not not equal to 10. That'll, that'll give your high school grammar teacher a, a little case of the spinning head. Uh, Wildcard string comparisons. Is world like star or star? Yes, it is. What about case sensitive? Nope, it is not case sensitive, but there is a C like. There's also a not like and a C not like. Now world is case sensitive, not like star uppercase OR because it doesn't have the uppercase. And that's a lot of uh, additions to put onto an operator, but you can do all of those things. There's a bunch of other operators you can get into. These are the basic ones. Uh, you can also do multiple conditions. Uh, for example, let's see, is 10 greater than five and is five less than 10? Sure. What about that. No, and see, it's not true because one of the sub expressions 10 is less than 10 isn't true. However, if I replaced minus and with minus or, and it is true, because now only one of the two sub expressions has to be the same. And those didn't need to go in parentheses either. I just like to put the parentheses because it helps me kind of group them logically in my head. You can use parentheses to help force the order of evaluation of these things. There's lots of other operators. In fact, if you look at help star operator star, there's arithmetic operators, assignment operators, comparison operators, which we've been looking at, logical operators like and and or, which we also looked at, uh, lots of other operators. Just ask for help about one of those topics, and you'll get a complete breakdown of all of them, uh, including match, in, not in, replace, all kinds. So where can you use these things? Well, one of the places you'll use them is in PowerShell's scripting language, when you start writing if constructs and things like that. But even without getting into scripting, you can use these in the where object command, which is designed to filter things out of the pipeline. For example, let's get service and only keep the ones where the status property is equal to running. Now within where object dollar sign underscore is a placeholder for whatever got piped in. You see where object is designed to work with just about any kind of input from the pipeline. It doesn't know ahead of time that what you're sending in as a service because you might have written the command differently and you might not be sending in a service. So it just uses dollar sign underscore as kind of a generic way to refer to whatever was piped in. I don't really want to compare the entire service. I mean services have got things like names and a description and an executable path and dependent services, all kinds of stuff. I just want to refer to a piece of it. And in math, a decimal point usually refers to a fraction or a piece of something. And the piece I want to refer to is just the status. And I want to compare it to the string value running. So if this comparison is true, then the object will remain in the pipeline and be produced as the output of this command. If the comparison is false, then that service will get voted off the island, taken out of the pipeline, and it won't show up in my output. So there we go, a list of running services. You can get pretty complicated in there. Let's try this again with get WMI object. We'll retrieve the win32 service class, 
and I'm going to pipe it through where object again using the alias where. This time, let's do where the state does not equal running and where the start mode equals auto. So show me all the services that should be running that aren't running. Now, no output is actually good news here. Yeah, but there's usually a couple. The remote registry service is set to start automatically, but it stopped for some reason. Might have had trouble at boot up time or something else. And then this SPPSVC is also set to start automatically, but is not running. Those are things I might want to pay attention to. And that's one way that you can use comparison operators to take the output of a command and whittle it down to just the bits you need. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.